Welcome to my talk here at Festival 23 um, with the title Single Sign On from Rider Beam um, using proxy users. Um, during my talk, I would like to discuss um, proxy authentication in general and how we at IONOS used it to implement a single sign on feature um, for our shared posting customer databases. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Christian. I'm 36 years old. Um, I'm living in Karlsruhe in the southwest and part of Germany. And during my free time, I'm a hobbyist photographer and musician. And I'm very interested in uh, all sorts of animals, especially reptiles. Um, my professional career started around about 11 years ago when I joined the database team at 1-1 Um At that time, I worked as a working student and started implementing some database automation tools um, starting with the user management for MySQL databases. Um, my, current job my current job position, I'm um, the technically responsible for the whole database platform. And um, we currently support RIDB, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Um, we are operating database for internal purposes, then for customer facing products, and also for external databases, um, namely the shared hosting database platform. And um, in total, we have around about 4.6 million databases that run on a little over 9,000 Linux servers. Now, after introducing myself, uh, just a few words about uh, IONOS as a company. Um, we are Europe's largest hosting provider um, with around about 4,000 employees in 35 locations all over the world. And um, IONOS operates almost 9 million customer contracts uh, in several different markets. Um, in our 10 data centers, we house over 100,000 servers and um, over 22 million domains. Our product portfolio um, includes all sorts of internet related products like domain and SSL, um, mail office collaboration tools, like for example, cloud storage, um, website builders, um, classic web hosting products like shared web hosting, WordPress hosting, um, and also server and cloud related products. So now let's close look on how the talk will be structured. Um, first of all, I'm giving you some context. Um, I will define the scope and um, tell you for which products it's actually relevant. Um, next, I'll have a close look at the objectives um, that were to be achieved. Um, after that, uh, I'll give you some details about our implementation and our failed attempts on how to get there and how we finally reached our goals. Um, in the end, um, I will draw a conclusion and then there will be also probably some time for questions. Initially, the talk was planned for 30 minutes, now I have 45 minute time slot, so I guess there will be plenty of time for questions. Um, so, how can everything that I'm going to talk about be included in our product portfolio? Um, I'm going to focus mostly on the chat hosting platform. Um, that's where customers can have a classic web space, um, some databases, and then implement their own product projects on top of that. Um, and for this product, um, we manage, as a BS team, completely manage the whole database platform. Um, this infrastructure is quite large. Um, we run over 4.5 million databases on that, um, at an average of 2.8 million per second. And uh, this then results in around about 150 gigabit of uh, network traffic um, on a daily average. And um, the whole thing is using around about 280 terabyte of disk space. Um, the whole platform is designed in a fully turned up way. So in order to provide those databases, um, we actually have to pay double the resources uh, that we actually need. Um, but therefore, we can uh, easily survive even the outage from the whole data center um, without a lot of downtime. Um, Traditionally, uh, MySQL would be one of the most popular uh, databases um, for web hosting environments. And we support both versions that are currently available, MySQL 5.7 and also 8. Um, but uh, since some time ago, we also support MariaDB um, as our new default DBMS. Um, for adding MariaDB, um, we still had some challenges. Um, they are caused by the internal provisioning of our databases. Um, 
um, but I'll cover those challenges in the next few slides. So let's have a look at what we are doing and why we are doing it. Um, some years ago, the decision was made to uh, renew the whole shared housing database infrastructure to make it more future-proof and flexible. And um, this whole initiative was embedded in a bigger project to uh, revise the whole uh, provisioning for shared housing products. And also at that time, the decision was made to exclusively um, only support MySQL Trusted Sun. Um, one of the main goals was to have a very good customer experience, and so a decision was made that um, it should be possible for the customer, once locked in our control panel, and that he could also use um, PHP Mapman without uh, providing any, any further credentials. Um, so just imagine, yeah, um, the later other use cases also were added. Um, for example, customer care also needs to be able to have a way to connect to the customer's database just to help um, in case the customer um, needs some advice or asks our support. Um, there are a few obvious ways on how to achieve that. So somehow you need credentials to the database, so why just not simply go there and uh, take the credentials of the customer install them somewhere um, and use the credentials then to create connections to the database. Um, yeah, I think it's already obvious that storing passwords of a customer somewhere is not the best idea. And also your security department would not be too happy with you when you go that way. Um, um, so yeah, that's already a big no-go. Um, the next solution which is also quite simple, would be just create additional users for the use cases. So create an additional user for PHP Markman, create additional user for support tools. Um, but yeah, then the downsides would be that can be quite complex um, when new use cases um, show up. Um, and also you still have the problem that you have to store passwords somewhere. If you store the passwords, um, they can still get lost and this is definitely nothing you want to have. Um, so why don't you just make the users only temporary available? So need a, a, you need a user, then create a user, use it for quite a amount of time, and then move it again. But then um, just imagine a customer logging into PHP Mapman, creating a view on some, some tables, and then afterwards he logs out of PHP Mapman. Eventually the database user gets removed again, and um, the customer uh, has an invalid view, which is cannot, which she cannot use anymore. So um, yeah, this is also not really a good option because providing such an easy way to create invalid objects um, is definitely nothing you want to have for your customers. So um, this is also also nothing we can or we should support. Um, So yeah, and if you don't can if you can't have um, any easy solutions, we also uh, had a look at some other options um, which I'm not going to cover now because they were not so relevant. And eventually, um, our dev team stumbled across um, a funny privilege that is often a little bit overseen, and it's the proxy privilege. And what this is, and what you can do with it, um, I'm going to cover in the next few minutes. So just a quick excursion about proxy users. Um, proxy uh, as a privilege is initially meant to be as a restriction for custom authentication plugins um, that implement user mapping somehow. So um, you can have a custom authentication plugin like PUM, for example, that um, implements user mapping um, from some external sources. And then uh, in the end, um, you need to limit that somehow that, for example, you have user A, it should be mapped to user B within the database. And um, the proxy privilege can limit that user A can only map to user B and not to user C, for example. Um, yeah, 
it's only possible when the authentication plugin already supports user mappings and the MySQL native password plugin does not. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And then came MySQL 2007. Um, with that version, Oracle um, implemented new features um, which allow you to create server side user mappings and therefore they implemented check proxy users and MySQL native password. Um, proxy users. Um, together with those um, and, uh, variables uh, configured, um, it makes uh, it very easy to create uh, user mappings um, by uh, misusing the proxy privilege not to restrict uh, user mappings from external plugins, but rather to implement them. And so um, it's not the very best solution, but yeah, our dev team discovered that and they found it really helpful. But um, first of all, I was not too happy with their designs, but um, after some discussions, I had to admit that there was not really a better solution. Um, so that's what they implemented. Um, in the end, they came up with a concept that basically um, includes two types of MySQL accounts. Um, one would be um, a so-called owner user, and the other ones would be then regular database users. Um, the owner account would generally be the user that has all permissions on the customer's database. Um, it can be locked so that nobody can use the owner user directly. Um, and it also should be the, the only user that is set as a definer for views, triggers, and so on. Um, then there are actual user accounts. Those user accounts are that um, are used for actually connecting to the database and um, also the, the main user of the customer is one of them. Um, that's the only user um, which is actually um, visible in a control panel and should be used in the customer's um, uh, own apps. Um, yeah, and then there can be other users um, with a limited lifetime, for example, for PHP Madman or some other tools. And um, those will be then um, short-lived. They will be removed from our provisioning after some time. And uh, also those users will be then exactly like the main user will be proxy to the owner, that no matter how the customer connects to the database, in the end, it will be still the same user, the so-called owner user that acts on the database. So, um, with this design, um, you can basically avoid storing passwords anywhere because those passwords are just generated once, connection is made, and then never really used again. Yeah, this is a. Uh, very uh, simplified illustration on how this could look like. Um, so on the left side, you would have a user um, that is then uh, connecting to the database. Then the user mapping takes place. And within the database, um, only the, the owner user will um, act um, to create objects, to create the database, no matter what. Um, yeah. Here you can see a very basic example of SQL that is used to set the whole thing up. Um, you have a database has to be, um, you have an owner user, owner 0 age 15, you have a proxy user, uh, 47 11. Can, yeah, I think it can be that. Um, and as you can see here, the only user that actually has privileges in the database is the owner. And um, the proxy user itself only gets the proxy privilege to the owner user. Um, and uh, as soon as you log in using that proxy user and you check the outputs of the user and the current user functions, you can see that um, the user function returns always the name of the proxy user, whereas the current user will return to the owner. Yeah, then relatively soon after the implementation for MySQL 7, um, we got into discussion with our product management that it would be a really nice idea to also support MariaDB on the shared hosting platform as a nice add-on for our customers or even as a default database. Um, by the time already some customers were asking for it, so the discussion was not too long and um, the decision was really 
was made relatively quickly to also implement MariaDB. Um, but then um, the implementation we did uh, uh, years ago with the MySQL 5.7 platform uh, became a little bit of an obstacle for us um, implementing MariaDB um, because MariaDB neither supports um, check proxy users nor the MySQL native user password user MySQL native password proxy users. Um, at that time, we got into contact with MariaDB, um, and uh, even though they said that they would not um, backport the feature from, Mar Mar from MySQL to MariaDB, um, we still got a lot of very helpful um, feedback from them and suggestions on how we could um, achieve uh, the behavior um, with uh, um, stuff that is already in the MariaDB server. And we tested various solutions um, based on max scale, um, based on the role concept, um, multiple authentication methods um, per user. And we even reviewed uh, something that only exists as a concept, um, which was the sudo. Um, but unfortunately, nothing really um, uh, supported everything that we needed. And so in the end, after some discussions, um, uh, we we came to the conclusion that MariaDB uh, could support us with the proxy plugin, and um, we would then just sponsor the implementation for it. So soon after that, um, we got a working prototype of the auth proxy um, module, and this proxy module more or less implements the whole um, the, the same functionality like MySQL 7 does with the um, check proxy users and uh, and yeah it's quite easy to install it's just a regular plugin put it into the plugin directory of your server and uh, then install it via install plugin or put it into plugin load um, doesn't really matter it doesn't any special configuration and um, it provides the same or more or less the same functionality uh, like the MySQL 557 um, check proxy user stuff. Um, and it um, fetches the user mapping information from the MySQL proxy drift table. Um, this is more or less the same example like so earlier from MySQL 557. Um, but this time it's for MariaDB, and we still have our test database, um, TestDB, the owner user and the proxy user are more or less the same. Um, the database privileges are still only on the owner user, and um, the only big difference is the creation of the uh, proxy user, because now the proxy user needs to be identified not via um, MySQL native password plugin, but rather via the proxy plugin. Um, but the address is again pretty much the same. Um, you can still use select the user, current user, to verify that um, the user mapping actually took place. Um, it's still the proxy user for the user output and the owner for the current user. Um, I just pasted in here um, a password hash, but it's not really uh, a secure password. It's only AAAA. Um, it's just there that you could use the slides eventually um, to uh, set it up on your own machine. So yeah, what is the conclusion um, that we can draw from that project? Um, with the new auth proxy plugin, in the end, we are finally able to um, uh, offer MariaDB as an additional database to our customers. And we went even one step further and made it our default. So more or less every new database that is provisioned now is not MySQL 5.7 anymore, but rather um, MariaDB. And um, since the time when we introduced that, around about two years ago, um, we already provisioned uh, over 750,000 databases with MariaDB. And um, there was one big thing that we learned from that. Um, uh, even though it's not really necessary, it's worth um, taking into consideration to create an index on the MySQL proxy drift table on the user column 
um, because this is used quite a lot. And as soon as you have more than just a few database users and with a few thousand, um, we do have quite some uh, amount of users on our systems. It's a good idea um, to have the index there and to speed up the, um, the, the login process a lot. Um, we're even so confident uh, with the plugin um, that we're currently planning on the migration of all our MySQL 507 databases, as this is getting end of life very, very soon. And um, we currently have 3.5 million databases that are very soon be migrated from MySQL to um, Rydip. So um, even though we were using the plugin um, exclusively for uh, the last two years now, um, it's been uh, it's going to be made public uh, very soon. Um, how exactly? We're not exactly sure yet, um, but it will come. And I think I'm already at the end of my talk, so um, now would be time for some questions. <laughs>